Righto, Talia there champs and welcome to the show. Today I'll be showing you the difference between a GTX 1050 and GTX 1060 video editing in Premiere Pro in the timeline, how it plays back, how it performs, the difference between the two. I've already done a rendering test between the 1050 and the 1060, you can check out that video. Now what you'll see is there's actually no difference between the two when you actually edit video. In the real world there is no difference. And another thing you'll notice here too is I'm playing back at full, full resolution there. So I'm not playing back at half and I never expected a laptop to be able to do full. If you set it to half, it'll plow through this timeline. So for actually cutting your content together, there really is no difference between the two. Now when I'd done the render test, I'd done a full project. If you actually just render a, say, a five minute file, there's actually no difference in the rendering times either. But with a proper real world project, there was around a 20% difference between the two. Now this project was actually a really heavy duty one. It had really high resolution photos, like 36 megapixel photos. Really, they should be resized down to the project. You wouldn't usually do that. So if you were to resize these photos down to 4K size, you probably wouldn't have any issues with either the GTX 1050 or 1060 not being able to actually play through the photos. That's just one thing to note there. So let's have a look. Let's see how they both perform just in the timeline editing. Is there any difference? Well, spoiler alert, no. They both perform fantastic. And this is in laptops, of course. All right, so here we have 4K content. Let's see how it plays. So the videos in here are from Panasonic GH4, they're 24p, and it's 4K, 100 megabits per second, and it's pretty much typical H.264. It's an MOV file, that's what it outputs. Let's see how it plays. Now, up here, you'll see the green, green light here. That shows you if any frames are dropping. So all this is doing now, is playing the 4K content. Can it play it? And just for reference, the MacBook Pro I reviewed, it did have the AMD 455 in it, but it couldn't actually even play it back. And I have tested a 460 out now with a 4 gigabyte. It can play it back, but as soon as you start putting color corrections and LUTs on, then it slows down. Whereas this one can actually do color corrections. I'll just do a color correction. Let's play it again. As you can see, green dot, real time. I'll just add a LUT. Uh, I think I've got one on the desktop. Yep, that's a LUT. Now, as soon as I apply the LUT, it's not real time anymore, okay? It is dropping to some frames, but it's still very smooth. But I stop that. And I play it again, and it's all green. It's all good to go. So just the action of applying the LUT did make it drop some frames, but it actually can play the LUT in real time too, with no frames drops, as you can see. All right, so I'll go back a bit. So there is some color correction there. Now this is where the Mac died. Now even the 460 Mac, as soon as you applied the LUT, it just died. The 455 couldn't even actually play it back at all, just without a LUT applied. Now let's go. Right, so green there, real time, let's go. Let's see if we can do some stuff in real time. Look at that, no frames dropping here. Color corrections on the fly. Look at that. Oh, that's pretty good. I mean, this is 4K, very compressed content, and it's still in color corrections on the fly. Fantastic. All right. So I'll just back out of those actions there. So I've taken off the color corrections now. Now let's see if it can play two 4K streams. So let's go here. Oh. All right, so. So that's really crude. But what we have there is two 4K streams. Let's see if it can play that in real time. Okay, so playing both those 4K streams, no problems. Real time, let's see, do some color correcting. Yep, okay, still real time. 
Oh, that's fantastic. That's unbelievable. All right, the fans are kicking in. It's working to do that. But look, and this is full playback here. Have a look here. This is full. Now, I never expected a laptop to be able to even put that on full ever. So it just shows you the horsepower that this actually has. And you might think the GTX 1050 isn't the most powerful graphics card in the world. It's not. But that 4 gigabytes just allows you to edit 4K content. No problem. And look, you just scrub across it. I mean, it's got color correction supplied. It's just no problem. Just scrolls like butter across it. Here I have an actual finished project. And we'll see how it plays through that. And this has LUT applied. It has color correction and it has very high resolution files. I mean, like the images in this are over 8K, they're like 36 megapixel. And I didn't reduce the size of them, they're about 30 megabytes each file. And if you don't know, actual photos, high resolution photos will actually kill your video editing machine quicker than 4K or even 8K footage. It really does kill your system photos do. All right, so. Let's see, this is 4K content, color correction applied, LUT applied, and high resolution photos. Like this photo here, look look how smooth it scrolls. This is the GTX 1060 in this, six gigabyte. Very smooth. It just scrolls through this like butter. Like, it's unbelievable, okay? Now, full. I haven't reduced it by half, this is full. So it just scrolls through this stuff like butter, no problems. Let's try it on the XPS 15. Let's go back to home. And same project. You can see there. Like butter. Smooth. Just as smooth. It's at full. So good. It just plays it back. No problem. It's just so smooth. Now I couldn't do this on the last XPS 15 because it was only a 2 gigabyte. That's what killed it. But um, this is 4K content, and these are high resolution photos. It's just to scroll through this like butter with the color corrections. I'll show you how much color correction is applied. If you go to here and I remove that color correction, where is it? Uh, sorry. Let's remove that color correction. And you can see, look, that's massive difference, right? So that's log footage or whatever flat footage and it's had a lot applied and color correction so that's a lot of heavy duty work there and it scrolls through it like butter okay all right now let's see how it plays back you've got to keep an eye on the green dot there that will tell you when it drops frames and the green dot here okay so there all right so even the GTX 1060 could not play that back without dropping some frames. Now, it, one thing to note here is it drops some frames, but it's still silky smooth. It's all that means when it's orange is it's only just dropping a few frames. It actually still is smooth. When it goes red, that's when it's bad. So let's try that on the XPS 15 with the GTX 1050 in it. And right. So that's green, green. Now, as soon as it hits the photo, which there's a photo, bang. That's when it's gonna drop some frames because at the end of the day, these are laptop. At the end of the day, these are laptop GPUs. But there you can see it, even though the frames are being dropped here, it is still smooth. See, it's yellow, but it's still smooth. And if I stop it and I play it again, that'll be green until it hits a photo. So it can handle the color correction, it can handle the LUT, but as soon as it hits a high resolution photo, then it will just drop a few frames, which is pretty good. Because I know even desktops. So it's hitting a high res photo now, there you go, boom. That high res photo is what kills it. But still, it's still smooth as silk, look at it. That's not dropping any frames now. It dropped them there, but you can see, green, no problem. Hit the photo, there you go. Let's try that on the GTX 1060. 
Hmm. Okay, what's going on here? That should not be like that. Right, green. That's how it should be. And we'll see. Right here is where the photo hits. And I remember like keeping my GTX 980 that used to die when I when I had when I had photos. So here we go, high resolution photo, blue drop frames. No, see? Now that's the difference of the extra power of the GTX 1060 and the extra two gigabytes of RAM. It didn't actually drop frames when it hit that high resolution photo. Hits another one here, see if it drops frames. No. So that's the difference. That's the only difference I can tell when I edit it. There you go, it's just dropped some frames there. Okay. Obviously it's memories run out now. So in real world, when I edit, I don't put the photos until last. And I don't put the colour correction until last. So when I edit on both of these, a GTX 1060 versus a GTX 1050, there's no difference. If this plays back things like butter, you seen it play everything, only when it hit a high resolution photo did it drop some frames. Other than that, it didn't drop any frames. This one here doesn't drop many frames at all. It will even go through a high res photo, but when it goes through a couple of them, it will start dropping. Even my Titan X drops frames after a few heavy duty high res photos, so. All right, so there you can see that the 1050 and 1060, there's virtually no difference between the two editing in the timeline. They're both fantastic. And if you actually done things right and actually resized the photos to a manageable size and then converted your footage to say Cineform or ProRes, like video editing will be like butter at full, no problems. And even if you don't do that and you just use the compressed footage and high res photos, it's still like butter at full. Unbelievable on a laptop. So there you have it, guys. If this video is useful. Give me a thumbs up there. I'd like to really thank you guys for watching. I've got lots more tech content coming soon. Until next time, guys, tally ho.